Summer is in full swing and you have got to try these recipes. Number one, of course we had to start with everyone's favorite summer fruit, watermelon. Now the key to picking out a good watermelon is you wanna look for something that is heavy and I always like to look for one with a big yellow spot like this on it. My favorite way to cut a watermelon, all we're going to do is slice it in half and then we're just gonna slice it across lengthwise and then slice it horizontally as well. And you get these perfectly sized snack bites with this little grip at the bottom and I just think it's the best way to cut watermelon. Now, something I have recently been doing is to add a little bit of lime zest and a little bit of lime juice. And this just adds a whole new dimension and flavor to your watermelon. It is so delicious. Or if you're tired of eating your watermelon just as a plain cut up fruit snack, you can actually freeze it, which brings us to number two, fruit popsicles. Summer is obviously the perfect time for making fruit pops and there are so many different flavor combinations, but let's start with watermelon. All you need to do is add your cut up fruit pieces into a blender. You can also add some lime zest or lime juice in here if you like, blend it up and add it to your popsicle mold. Another flavor I really like in summer is cantaloupe. So again, we're just gonna take our cantaloupe pieces, add them to the blender cup and then into our popsicle mold. Now, if you wanted to get a little bit fancier, you can try adding other ingredients such as vegan yogurt. So first, of course, we'll start with our fruit base. I'm just using some sliced mango, and then we're gonna add a little bit of this silk coconut yogurt. You can use any kind of vegan yogurt you like, or of course, just leave it out if you prefer. And then we're gonna do kind of a cute little swirl pattern here. So we're just gonna add a little bit of mango at the bottom, some coconut yogurt after that, and then just kind of swirl that around a bit, add a little more mango, and then a little more coconut. Now onto our blueberry flavor. I'm just using some frozen blueberries that I defrosted in the microwave and another spoonful of the silk coconut yogurt. And then again, we're just gonna layer them. So a little bit of the blueberry mixture on the bottom, then some coconut yogurt, more blueberry, and top with coconut yogurt again. And we'll just pop those in the freezer to harden. Continuing on with lovely summer fruit ideas, let's make some mango salsa. This one is super easy because you're just chopping everything and then mixing it in a bowl. And trust me, it tastes so much better than store-bought. So we're just gonna start with two mangoes. And I found the easiest way to cut mangoes is to slice them along the pit. And then you're just gonna take a knife and score on the inside. You can make these cubes as big or as small as you want. And then we're just gonna use a spoon to scoop them out. And then with the pit, you can go ahead and peel off the remaining skin and then slice off very carefully any other meat that's on there. Now for this salsa, we're also going to need some jalapenos. I am a little bit sensitive to spice, so I'm going to remove the seeds from mine. But of course, if you like it spicy, go ahead and keep some of those in. We'll also need a red bell pepper, half of a red onion, and cilantro. Now, some people will say, just go ahead and leave the stems on your cilantro. I personally would rather just take them off. I don't really like chunks of stem in my salsa, but do whatever you like here. If you prefer to just leave them on and chop it finely, go ahead and do that. If you prefer to remove them like me, you can do that as well. And then lastly, we'll just need the juice of one lime and some salt. You could also add some black beans in here or chickpeas in here if you wanted to get a little extra fiber and protein. But honestly, you guys, this salsa is so delicious. You have got to try this one out. Now you can eat this salsa with store-bought tortilla chips or you can make your own if you want some that are oil-free. I actually have a whole video for that. If you're interested, I will link it down below. Now I love a good veggie snack as much as the next person, but let's face it, plain veggies can get kind of boring. So let's jazz them up a bit and make some quick pickles. Quick pickles are so easy to make. Basically all you're going to do is chop up some veggies, use whatever ones you like. I'm using carrots and cucumber today. And we are doing the quick pickle method so we don't actually need to boil anything or add any sugar or salt, but you can add some herbs and spices if you do want a little bit of flavor variation. We're gonna pour equal parts of water and apple cider vinegar in here. You could also use plain white vinegar if you prefer. And then once these are done, these will get stored in the fridge. They're ready to eat right away and will last about a week. 
And speaking of veggie sticks, another way to jazz them up is with a dip. Now, if you haven't tried edamame hummus yet, you are definitely missing out. It has a beautiful, gorgeous, vibrant green color, and it is delicious. So we're just gonna start with some frozen edamame and green peas, and we're just gonna add those to some boiling water and let them simmer for about five or six minutes. And then once they're drained, go ahead and add them to your blender with some tahini. Lemon juice, these are just frozen lemon juice cubes that I keep in the freezer. Garlic, water, and salt. And just look at this gorgeous color. Now you can serve this in the same way as regular hummus with veggie sticks or pretzels or on toast. But actually what I like to do is to add it to little finger sandwiches, which brings us to number six. Now, of course, if you don't have any edamame hummus, you can use regular hummus here or really any kind of sandwich filling that you like. Today, I'm using our green hummus with some cucumbers and vegan cheddar. And we're just gonna cut these into cute little bite-sized finger sandwiches. Now, since we're talking about summer, July is actually plastic-free month. I'm personally making an extra effort to reduce my plastic this month, which brings me to the sponsor of today's video, True Earth. Now, I used to think that True Earth was just those awesome little laundry strips, but I've actually come to learn that they offer so much more. True Earth also has things for your kitchen, like dishcloths, reusable produce bags, bamboo cutlery sets, and sponges. These sponges are honestly my new favorite thing because they are tiny, compact pop-up sponges, but work exactly the same as a regular sponge. And most importantly, they are biodegradable, compostable, and 100% plastic free. So instead of throwing them in the trash when I'm done, I'm gonna be putting them in my green bin. True Earth also has these awesome bamboo cutlery sets. So next time you're on the go, you can just skip the plastic silverware altogether and bring this with you instead. And if you need something to replace plastic bags at the grocery store, True Earth even has these produce bags that are 100% organic cotton. True Earth is a great company to support because they are dedicated to reducing plastic, not to mention they donate laundry strips to people in need. And of course, I have a special discount code for you guys. You can use the code Let's Eat Plants to save 10%. And now back to our snacks. Another little sandwich type of thing that is perfect for a snack is pinwheels. Now you have a few options here for your spread. You could use hummus, you could use vegan cream cheese, or even something like cashew cream. I'm just using a plain vegan cream cheese here and we are going to jazz it up and make it very herby with some basil and chives. Now again, for the fillings, use whatever you like. I'm just adding some sun-dried tomato and tomato, and then we'll just roll it up and cut it into slices. This dessert snack has been going absolutely viral everywhere, so of course I had to try it. Starting with our sliced strawberries, we're just gonna add them to a bowl with a couple spoonfuls of vegan yogurt and give that a quick mix. And then we just need a piece of parchment paper. Pro tip for your parchment paper, if you're having trouble getting it to lay flat, try crumpling it up and that should help it to lay flat more easily. And then we're just gonna take dollops of our strawberry yogurt mixture and add them onto the parchment paper. And now we'll just repeat the same process with our blueberries. So again, just making little clusters here, or you can even keep them as individual blueberries. And then we'll pop these in the freezer to harden. And then lastly, we'll use our mango chunks, again with our vegan yogurt, and give those a good mix. Now once they're frozen, you can leave these yogurt bites as is, or you can add some dark chocolate to them. That is the recipe that is going absolutely viral. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this dark chocolate and mix it with some vegan chocolate chips. And then we're gonna pop that into the microwave and melt it in 30 second intervals and just make sure you give it a quick stir each time. And then we are just gonna take our frozen little yogurt berry discs and pop them into the chocolate. And then these will just go back into the freezer until they're hard.
I love, love, love a good energy ball. And these are actually perfect for summer because they're no bake and you keep them in either the fridge or the freezer. So they're nice and cool when you go to eat them. You can also make them fun summer flavors like add some coconut or lime zest, but I really love the classic chocolate chip. So we're just gonna start out by pulsing some dates in the food processor. Just make sure you remove the pits first. And then we'll need about 12 to 15 dates. So add this to the food processor until the pieces are nice and broken up. And then we will add in our rolled oats, peanut butter, flax, and our chia. And now the mixture should be kind of sticky here. It should be able to form into a ball pretty easily. If not, you may need to add a tablespoon of water or maple syrup to help it stick better. And lastly, I'm going to add in some chocolate chips and some dried cranberries, both of which are optional. Form them into a ball with our hands and just roll them until they're smooth. Now traditional Jello is not vegan because of the gelatin, but these Jello bites are. We're going to use something called agar agar in this recipe, and that will replace the gelatin. Now this works with most liquids, so you could do it with a fruit juice or coconut milk, but I'm actually going to use some fresh fruit in there to get a little bit more fruit flavor. So we're just gonna start by pureeing some of our sliced mango, and then add that into a saucepan with a half a teaspoon of agar agar powder. And in order for the agar agar to activate, it needs to be heated thoroughly, so we wanna bring it up almost to a boil, and let that simmer for about five minutes. Just make sure you're stirring it continuously. And now it will still look liquidy even after it has heated thoroughly, but just work quickly here because as it cools, that's when it starts to solidify. So we're just gonna pour it into our silicone molds and then into the fridge to chill. So I'll link this agar agar powder down below in case you wanna check it out. And also some of the different fruit juices you can and cannot use with it, just in case you want some more info. Now I also love these frozen banana pops, which make a great snack, or actually I guess they're more kind of like a dessert. I actually have a whole free printable PDF here with those banana pops, as well as some cookie dough bites and some other summer desserts. If you're interested, you can click here and check it out.